What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2017 Kia Optima SX Limited. Huge thanks to Kia for providing me with this very nice Optima to review for you guys today. So about the 2017 Kia Optima, well it is very, very nice looking. Got a restyle about a couple of years ago. Uh, it just looks really nice still, really sharp. I love that front end there. You know, you have the very cool uh, grill that's got the little uh, speckled dots that looks really cool. And then you also have these very cool headlights uh, that are LED and also have this dynamic lighting uh, system so that they bend in corners with you. Uh, and a very cool thing there, I like the little LEDs you have in the lower part of the front bumper. And overall, very attractive front end coming down to the sides. Here on the SX model, you have the turbo badge here in this little uh, fake fender vent that looks very good though. Uh, you have the chrome wheels, which aren't my personal taste, but make it look a little more upscale, I guess. And then going out to the back there, you have a very nice uh, C-pillar treatment that I really think kind of sets it apart a little bit. And then you have a very attractive taillights there in the back um, and a nice little rear diffuser there in the bottom. And overall, it's just a really nice looking thing from every single angle. Uh, it's a really attractive design. I don't think it's, you know, too bold or too conservative. It's just a really good design all around. Right, so the interior of the 2017 Kia Optima SX Limited. Well, this is basically a fully loaded Optima, so it is very nice in here, as you would expect. Uh, so anyway, first things first, sitting down in these seats, very nice quilted Nappa leather seats you have here uh, in the SX Limited, and they're just really beautiful looking here in this uh, uh, kind of uh, mahogany looking color, a darker brown uh, with a little bit of purple, I think, at certain lighting uh, circumstances, but it looks really nice. I just really love the way they look, and they're also very comfortable seats as well very soft they're heated and cooled um, and they do those functions very well in addition to you know being very comfortable the only thing I can complain about those the bolstering of the seats um, you know again we're talking about a mid-size family sedan so I'm not expecting sports car bolsters but I did notice I've already driven this car for about 120 miles and I did notice it doesn't hold you in corners or when you're making turns as well as some of the others do it's just the bolstering is a little too relaxed I think for uh, my preference um, but again like just even for practical purposes of cornering, you know, at normal speeds. Uh, I just wish there was a little more to hold you in there. Um, but otherwise, they're very nice seats. Next to the steering wheel in the Optima SX, which is a very nice wheel. Uh, it's got a flat bottom to it here. It's got a really nice 93 grip, nice little 10 and 2 notches, and a, a somewhat thinner wheel than some of the sportier stuff out there, uh, but right on par with uh, most of the others out there. Just a, a really nice wheel. It feels great to use. A uh, fair assortment of buttons on it here, uh, but not super cluttered you know and after uh, a day or two you get used to where everything's set up not too bad the only thing I can complain about with the steering wheel is the paddles which look very nice but they don't feel very nice and you can hear they just sound cheap. It's very cheap, hollow sounding plastic. Um, and that was something I'm disappointed by because in other vehicles like the Stinger that I just recently reviewed, very nice real metal paddles, but not the case here in the Optima where they're just uh, plastic and don't feel very great. Uh, but they're nicely placed and good to have paddles nonetheless. Next are the gauges here in the Optima, which are very attractive and good looking gauges. I do like the cool fonts you have there for the analog uh, portions. And then you have the digital portion there in the middle, which is a little bit on the smaller side, but on par with what you get with most of the other vehicles in this segment. Um, and, uh, you know, it just has your basic trip information there, you know, no performance metrics or anything like that, even though this is the sportier of the Optimas, uh, just all your basics in there, but good to have and uh, nicely laid out. Coming over to the side of the dashboard here, uh, it's uh, more of this just very good, simple design that I think, uh, you know, it's not too cluttered, it's not too busy or trying to be too stylistic, it's just simple and straightforward, and I really appreciate that. Right up top here, you have this 8-inch uh, Uvo Connect screen that uh, looks really good. It's got, you know, your little uh, quadrants uh, that'll display, you know, your audio and your map at the same time, which I do personally like. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just very easy to navigate. Thankfully, just being a simple touchscreen, it's not too far of a reach. Uh, it's very responsive and easy, you know, so, I mean, the maps look good if you want to, you know, do your uh, traditional navigation system uh, stuff there. Uh, but then, you know, if you do want to, you can go into Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is standard here on the Optimas. Really nice to have that. And then you can just use your phone's maps, uh, which is a lot easier for a lot of people, myself included. Um, and so great to have all that functionality in there. It also will do Pandora and all those types of things. Uh, but then as far as the normal
normal audio stuff for radio controls and all that. Very uh, logically set up, very easy, you know, with the presets there. Very easy to tune, thanks to a uh, traditional tune knob you have down here, along with your standard volume knob, which is always nice to have. Um, but while we're coming down to the rest of the controls here, you do have a good amount of buttons here as shortcuts to the stuff on the screen, which doesn't make much, much sense to me because it's a very redundant. That's a lot of buttons uh, down here, and I would just like them to just get rid of half of those and you know, make it a little simpler. Um, but anyway, good to have those shortcuts uh, for those that want them. And then you have the climate controls down here, which are, uh, you know, a nice uh, feeling knobs and uh, look good and just your basics there. And so overall, very simple and straightforward here in the center console, and I like it a lot. Coming back by the shifter here, you do have a couple other extra buttons. You have your heated steering wheel button, which is very nice and works very well here uh, in the colder months. Heats up very quickly and a really well done heated steering wheel. You also have your drive mode selector and then your uh, seat controls for heating and cooling, your surround view camera and parking brake. And uh, good to have all those nicely condensed down there. As far as storage space in the Optima, it's really good. Uh, so first off in the doors here, you have a large map pocket with a bottle holder, which is always great to see. Coming over to the center here, you have this nicely uh, covered uh, little center area that has um, a power outlet, a USB jack, an auxiliary jack, and then you have this nice uh, little cubby that is actually a Qi wireless charging pad as well. So if you have a phone that does wireless charging like mine, uh, you can just lay it down in there and immediately have you know wirelessly charging uh, capability. And so really great to have that. And like I said, it's a good size. You can fit all the modern, you know, large smartphones in there with ease and a really nice little storage space in there. Coming back, you have another very deep uh, square area that you can fit the key or something like that, but it's larger than that. You could fit, you know, other items in there, but nothing, you know, that's a uh, cell phone size. And then you have two cup holders, which are a good size. And then you have the center armrest, which is uh, really nice and uh, softly padded uh, with more of this great leather. And anyway, you open that up and then you'll see a little uh, top portion here that is removable and you can uh, put a bunch of stuff in there. And then beneath that, you have a nice, large, deep uh, cubby that uh, you can fit all kinds of stuff, you know, sunglasses, uh, wallet, all that kind of stuff fits with ease in there. I also have another USB jack in there as well, which is good to have. And so overall, like I said, plenty of storage. Backseat space in the Optima is really great. A very spacious and roomy back seat. Uh, I'm five foot nine. Me sitting behind myself, I easily have about seven inches of leg room to spare. I mean, that is one of the best in this segment. Um, I think maybe the only one that might slightly beat it is the Volkswagen Passat. Uh, otherwise, it's unbeatable, I think, in this segment. It's really roomy and spacious. And here in the SX Limited trim, even those rear seats are heated, so it's a very nice place to be. Of course, you have more of that beautiful quilted uh, stitched leather back there. Um, and it's also got some additional accommodations. You have two air vents back there. Uh, you also have a power outlet and also a USB jack back there as well. There's a full down center armrest with uh, two cup holders built into it um, and so it's a really nice place to be back there and it feels very airy especially with this panoramic moonroof uh, that the SX L has and so overall really great uh, space there and those rear seats do also fold down flat so it'll help increase your uh, storage capacity in the trunk too as well and going back to the trunk there it is another really roomy area a very massive trunk it's a, got a nice wide opening uh, and it's very long and uh, pretty deep as well and just you can fit a ton of stuff in there I mean easily several suitcases three or four suitcases full size without an issue in that trunk I mean a really spacious trunk um, and then also it's a nice bonus that beneath the trunk you actually still have a spare tire which is getting more and more rare these days and something I think is still really nice to have um, so you're never stranded and so uh, overall a really great trunk area. All right, so start up and go for a drive. The uh, Kia Optima has this very nice key. It's uh, slender, has a really nice weight to it, and has metal buttons there on the back. So, I mean, a really high quality feeling key. And of course, this keyless entry and push button start here in the SX Limited. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the metal engine start button, and it starts right up. All right, so setting off from the 2017 Kia Optima SXL. Well, it's a really nice thing to just cruise in. It's got excellent visibility here, a very large windshield that's easy to see out of, a hood that drops down nicely. Uh, you have good view out of the sides here with large side windows. You have blind spot monitoring, so you don't really have any blind spots. The view out of the back is uh, fairly decent, uh, although it is a little bit of a smaller view there in the back, a little bit thinner than some of the other, you know, family sedans in this segment. It's a little harder to see out of, but of course you have all the safety tech uh, um, you know, with uh, 360 cameras here in the SX Limited um, and all this parking sensors and all that kind of stuff. So very easy to see out of. But let's turn down onto this back road here. We'll put it into sport mode and let's see how it does. Here we go. <laughs> A little bit of wheel spin there. 
gets up and goes pretty good. Once it starts cooking, it really flies. So the Optima SX uh, is the highest performing version with a two liter uh, four cylinder turbocharged engine that does 245 horsepower, 260 pound feet of torque. And it'll get this thing up and going zero to 60 in 6.8 seconds, which is uh, very respectable within the family sedan segment. And uh, really feels punchy, I gotta say, and especially in sport mode here, it nicely sharpens up the throttle response, gives you a little bit of a heavier steering feel, um, and uh, is pretty good, although it's still not as quick to downshift uh, the six-speed automatic as I would like. Um, but if you don't uh, you know, wanna wait around for it to shift for you, you can obviously do the manual shifting here with the paddle shifters or with the uh, stick here with the gear selector. Um, but it's just a standard six-speed Kia automatic, so not uh, anything crazy, and we'll try the manual shifting here. And so, <laughs> it's definitely a torque converter, and you know, it's just the type of uh, manual shifting automatic that you're suggesting when it should shift and then it does it for you in its good time. You know, it's not, not razor sharp or anything. Uh, you know, it's a far cry from what's in the uh, Stinger uh, GT with its eight speed automatic. That one is fantastic. Uh, but anyway, we'll go ahead and pop it out of that manual mode and just uh, cruise here and drive with the sport mode still enabled. Um, and it's a really nice cruiser. One of the most amazing things about the Optima here is just how smooth the ride is. I mean, you know, all mid-sized family sedans have smooth rides. That's nothing outstanding on its own, but this one just seems a, a little cut above the rest to me. It's just really nice and quiet and refined in here. There's very minimal wind noise. And another acceleration. <laughs> yeah, that torque really likes to shred those front tires. It's great. Uh, speaking of the tires here on the Optima, we have 235 wide tires all around, which is a pretty good, and they're Michelins too, so I uh, should have a pretty good amount of grip, but we're coming up to some uh, tighter corners here, and let's see how it handles. Okay, so the first thing you notice, it's it's got a little bit of lean and roll to it, um, but it actually feels fairly poised, I gotta say. Uh, and it's it's got a nice uh, steering weight to it so that it it feels substantial. It doesn't feel too light or, you know, uh, unstable. It's, it's actually done a pretty good job. I mean, there is a little bit of uh, roll and a, a little play in the suspension, but again, they're tuning this for comfort, uh, you know, it's, as a mid-sized family sedan. So it's not going to have the, you know, the stiffest of rides and, you know, the most composed handling, but, um, you know, driving this thing even up to, you know, seven or eight tenths, it doesn't really feel bent out of shape. It's really whenever you're really tight, I mean, I'm going to really Really tight corners right now where you, you know you feel the, the nose start to dive a little bit um, and it starts to you know go a little out of sorts but really it's doing quite well uh, I have to say I think you know the only uh, vehicle in this segment I think maybe handles a little bit better um, is the Volkswagen Passat uh, it, that kind of has a Volkswagen feel about it um, and so it, it just it but that actually had lighter steering so I actually prefer the heavier steering of this over uh, the lighter steering of that and uh, this feels a little more compact and uh, easier to push as well I think um, but it's a it's a pretty pretty good handling thing I gotta say other things to note here like I said throttle response is nice and sharp here in the sport mode uh, but even in the standard mode um, it still is pretty responsive I've over the course of 120 miles there wasn't really any times where I was like you know wanting it to give me more power it's usually doing exactly what I expect and exactly what I want it to do um, which is really great it, it allows you to have aggravation free stress free driving um, you just you know tell it what to do and it does it all exactly the way you're expecting and there's no surprises no annoyances it's just a good car this car it's really really well done uh, brake feel also is really good you have a little tiny bit of travel before you start getting to the brake pedal but it's really a pretty immediate bite to the brake pedal um, which again is exactly what you want and what you expect out of something uh, whenever you get on those brakes you want to have them start to bite really quickly and overall Oh, it just feels really good. I think one of the things that really helps the handling of the Optima here is that it's fairly lightweight, especially for its segment. Uh, these only weigh a little over 3,500 pounds, or 3,584, I think, here with the limited trim uh, and all of its extra bells and whistles. Um, and, uh, you know, at that weight, it's it's still fairly lightweight, and I think that's part of why it feels as good as it does in the corners. Other things to note, though, like I said, I've been driving this vehicle for about five days, about 125 miles now, um, and I'm just really impressed with it. It's just a really great daily driver, you know, just 
for going back and forth to the store, yeah, doing all your normal errands and things like that. It does it all with a smooth, quiet, comfortable ride, um, and it does it all, you know, very, very well. A couple other things to mention here. Uh, the stereo, it has a Harman Kardon stereo in it. Um, it's not quite as impressive, I think, as the one in the Stinger, um, but it still does sound very, very good. And I really like Kia. They have this software that helps satellite radio to sound better, and I've really noticed, compared to satellite radio listening in other vehicles, most other vehicles actually, it always sounds a little softer and warmer um, here on Kia's uh, sound systems, at least with the Harman Kardon uh, stereo, than it does uh, in other vehicles. And so, especially if you like satellite radio a lot, the Kia really, they've they've really kind of refined um, how that sounds and optimized uh, satellite radio you know, listening experiences. So that's a really cool little uh, interesting thing about this uh, you know, infotainment system, which does work very well. It boots up very quickly. I haven't been waiting around for it at any point during uh, the week, which is something that I can't even say about other higher end vehicles, you know, even from like Mercedes and things like that, where it takes a while to boot up. This doesn't have any boot up time, really. I mean, the maps take maybe five seconds or something, and then other than that, it's uh, ready, ready to go. Um, other things to note here though, uh, fuel economy during my week of driving here. So like I said, 125 miles, primarily city driving, stop and go traffic, that type of stuff, which is you know the worst for fuel economy. Um, so because of that, my average uh, MPG was 19.3 miles per gallon. Now these are rated at 22 in the city, uh, 31 on the highway for a combined average of 25. So I mean, I fell well short of the city number even, you know, which is supposed to be 22 uh, with my 19.3. I mean, yeah, I got on it a little bit more than probably the average driver would and you know uh, a little more aggressive uh, starting from a stop things like that but still um, it's just the way it goes with these turbo motors unless you're really taking it easy um, you know they just they can suck down the gas a little bit more um, so that's the only thing um, another thing I want to mention is the price though of the Optima so uh, this one like I said is basically a fully loaded example is the SX Limited it's got all the safety tech which by the way uh, while I'm briefly mentioning the safety tech it does work pretty well uh, I will say that you know, it had the autonomous braking system and all that kind of stuff, and that did not intervene during my week of driving, which uh, very few systems go an entire week without giving me a false alarm. This one has gone, you know, basically a whole week without giving me a false alarm, which is really impressive. Um, so hopefully Kia's system may, might be a little bit more advanced than some of the others at figuring out when there's a, an actual real threat and, you know, when it's worth getting your uh, heart racing and, you know, make you terrified for a split second uh, and, you know, and filtering out the stuff that doesn't need to be alerted to. Um, the only thing I will say though is their lane keep system is just a warning bell. It doesn't actually correct your lane, at least from my experience here. Um, it just is like, hey, you're going a slightly over the yellow line or you're even getting close to the yellow line and it just starts beeping. Um, and it's not super annoying, um, but you know, if you are even just cutting a shoulder slightly uh, to hit the apex, so to speak, on a normal commute, um, it'll you know start going off. And so things like that, I mean, thankfully you just hit a, hit a button, you turn it off, and it remembers that you turned it off so you don't have to hit it every time you get in the car so that is very nice so you can turn off as much of the safety stuff as you want um, personally though I'm still not in love with the, these systems I think they still have a little ways to go in all vehicles um, before you know they're really uh, ready for prime time um, and not not worth the extra money in my opinion so uh, like I said this one being fully loaded uh, this is just under $37,000 like $36,985 to be exact um, and uh, you know at that price it is getting a little a little pricey I I think you know you can get an SX without the limited trim. You don't get the quilted leather seats and a couple of the other niceties, um, and that's right around thirty thousand dollars exactly. And at that so a price like that, this makes a whole lot more sense with this more powerful motor. And of course, if you don't need the horsepower, um, there are the lesser powerful versions of the Optima to choose from as well. Um, and you know that's where you really get into the huge value. You get all this space and all this tech for the most part um, in vehicles that are in the mid twenty thousand dollar range, uh, which is really where the Optima is true value shines um because you know this one you know being almost 37 grand now with kia having the stinger for anyone that's an enthusiast like myself you can get a stinger with the four-cylinder engine not the gt but the standard stinger the premium one which has a lot of the same tech a very very nice interior that actually is nicer than the interior here of this optima outside of the you, know, you don't get the quilted leather seats in the uh, stinger premium but you do get metal paddle shifters and a lot of nicer materials you know metal volume knobs all that kind of stuff and i think that you know that's only about 30 
$88,000 including destination. So an extra $1,000, uh, you get an actual rear wheel drive sports sedan that uh, is very impressive handling wise, has the hatchback versatility while still having the really gorgeous looks of the Stinger. Um, so if I, you know, had basically thirty-seven dollars to $38,000 to spend and nothing more, Personally, if you're an enthusiast, I would recommend the Stinger, I think. Um, but if you just want something comfortable to just cruise around and you don't care about, you know, sportiness, uh, I think this is probably a little bit of a softer setup, a little more comfortable than the Stinger, um, and, you know, would be better suited for that. I mean, but like I said, this still does handle very well, like I said, thanks to its lower curb weight. Um, it's got pretty good handling, like I said, for the mid midsize sedan, family sedan class. But yes, that's basically it as far as all my thoughts here on the Optima SXL. It's a really well done uh, job here by Kia. It's very, very competitive with the rest of the other vehicles in the segment, and uh, I think really beats them in value uh, for the most part as well. Um, so anyway, let me know your thoughts on the Optima in the comments below. Huge thanks to Kia once again for providing me with this Optima to review for you guys today, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.